use cases, but making that user experience seamless to pop between them. Mm -hmm. And so in the future verse, um, we have, I think eight different applications targeted at different seg segments now, um, which will all be um, interact acting with each other and with that underlying metaverse of data. Um, and some of those are games and some of those are worlds and some of those are business applications. Um, but together, they, they form the metaverse. This specific podcast is from Aaron McDonald. He's the founder of Altered State Machine. Um, they've gone on to make many, many interesting projects, one being Futureverse, Fluff World, and a bunch of really cool stuff. So it was a really interesting chat. Make sure you go through the whole podcast and give me your feedback. I am going to do this many, many times in uh, making more podcasts in this series. So have fun. Aaron, thank you for joining me. Um, we're going to be firing up these podcasts again. Um, awesome. I would just love to start on, um, I know you guys uh, are very busy building out AI, X Metaverse, X NFT. There's a lot to get into in this podcast episode, but just quickly, man, we'll, we'll rewind it all the way back to the start. We'd love to know how you got started in the space. Yeah. Thanks, man. Um, thanks for the, the opportunity to come and have a chat and to kick off the podcast series again. I, I think probably all of this. I, I've been in technology for 20 something years now, but I really got kind of interested in um, Web3 around 2015, kind of started playing with um, and trying to understand Bitcoin. And then Ethereum um, really piqued my interest because um, my, while money was kind of in, an interesting thing um, to me initially, it was kind of more like, a, oh, this is kind of cool. When I saw smart contracts, I was like, this is this could this could be a game changer for how people interact with the web and um, how we could put communities back in control of the internet. And um, so I kind of jumped in in 2016 and started um, building ventures. And my focus at the time was how do you um, make the technology as usable as anything that my grandma picks up and uses mm. on her iPhone today. Mm. Um, because my, my honest belief at the time was unless you could solve that problem, um, decentralization didn't matter, you know, it was all cool. Um, mm. but unless you could get everybody using it, it didn't really have the, the effect that, um, that it was supposed to, or the meme that it was supposed to kind of deliver on. Um, so we started building companies that were researching in different protocol areas, and um, kind of the infrastructure um, and protocol layer for what would become the metaverse mm. later on. Um, and then from there, as we kind of filled out those um, user journeys and got kind of a good set of tools um, that we could bring together at that data layer, dial up being rolled out as a, like wow. a consumer product and then broadband you know, at first as a like business product and then into a consumer and fiber um, and then voice over IP and mobile networks and 3G and 4G and all these kind of things. I got to kind of be on the cloud com cloud computing. So I kind of got to be on the inside of all of these different um, technology transformations um, and to be able to take that experience into the web three domain and see some parallels and the journey that this technology is making um, or AI is making is really interesting. Yeah, we'd love to get to get into AI at some point, but I want to um, dwell on a topic that you brought up, which is sort of simplifying UX to the level that the common person can use. Um, yeah. How important do you think it is? We have all this cool technology today from AI to, you know, even the metaverse. And I think you're right. Web3 has failed in a large way in terms of we're very tech heavy. Innovation is definitely yeah. here. We're super excited, but unless we can make it, at, um, we can really get some some marketing slash copywriting slash UX designers here to fine tune all this stuff. We'll never go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just like you know, every successful product is built on the idea that you can do one magical thing that you could never do before. So, what are yep. those things, and how we can put those in front of mm. people? Um, one useful magical thing and you can get away with a little bit of bad UX um, around the edges if that mm -hmm. and that doesn't necessarily mean inside of a VR app or anything like yeah. that but it's like how do you build products where um, user experience silos are broken down 
Yeah, no, totally agree. Um, you've got some really cool pictures in your background, so I want to get into that yeah. a little bit. Um, the journey of you building in Web3, let's talk about that. So I know you guys started with, uh, was it Altered State Machine, or was there something before that? But would love to know a bit yeah. about sort of your NFT entry, I guess, and where you are yeah. at the moment. So yeah, I think, but like before Altered, well, Altered State Machine was an idea that me and my brothers have been working on now for about four years. Um, but our first, my first kind of entry into the NFT space with, with a company called Non-Fungible Labs, which I co-founded. And Non-Fungible Labs created the Fluff World Collection, which kind of got a lot of um, attention at the time because it was the first collection to kind of get some scale around the idea of um, 3D dynamic and multimedia content come to life in an NFT, like moving from that flat PFP to something that was, you know, a metaverse asset. Um, and so um, we, we got that out into the market and started to build on top of that. And then adjacent to that. Four to five years to get to where they are. Sandbox isn't even released yet. And they've taken five years or four years. Yeah. I know this stuff takes a long time and a lot of resources to yeah. build out. Would love to get your thoughts on, you know, from your end, like how much effort people and technology coming together does it take to even take on something as ambitious as it, the metaverse? It takes, yeah, it takes a lot. I mean, I think the first thing is for us, the metaverse is much more about that data layer than an application. We've had games for ages, like Roblox exists, Fortnite mm. exists, World of Warcraft exists. Like those things are not novel and, um, and so the interesting part of the metaverse is about the digital you that exists that you can portal between applications hmm. as opposed to like coming into an app and trying to be a virtual environment. That's kind of cool. Um, but what's really cool is being able to own my digital me and port that. Hmm. And so the first layer of the metaverse is a data layer, like your identity, social graph, communications, um, the metadata about things you own. That's, that's really the metaverse. And then when you look at it that way, then um, the metaverse and enabling the metaverse experience comes becomes about um, targeting applications for different use cases, but making that user experience seamless to pop between them. Mm -hmm. And so in the future verse, um, we have, I think, eight different applications targeted at different seg segments now, um, which will all be um, interact acting with each other and with that underlying metaverse of data. Um, and some of those are games and some of those are worlds and some of those are business applications. Um, but together they, they form the metaverse. But, I mean, it's a cool idea and you can sort of start building a, start showing some 3D gameplay and do some gaming mechanics, but to actually mm. build something open that users can generate content on that can hold hundred plus people in the same server and all this sort of stuff. All that architecture is, yep. is super complex. And like you said, 50 mil, 20 mil, you know, it's, it's tens of millions of dollars to build this and hold this up. Yeah. But like for me as an investor in, in the early days, you know, I was a bit naive and I, I, was, I got lucky with Decentraland and Sandbox and some of these projects that I was like, oh, you know, they seem to have the funding to get this out there. Yeah. But now knowing the timelines, I was like no, not touching anything unless they're well funded and have a great team that understand this stuff. And we'll yeah, stick don't get me wrong, like, plus. you know, the Sandboxes and the Decentralands, you know, they kind of were pioneers in the space mm. and um, they form a part of what the metaverse yeah. is. Um, and, you know, they've been, you know, carrying the industry on their shoulders a little bit because they were the, you know, early examples of, you know, visualizing in people's minds what this thing could end up being. Um, but it is super hard. And our mm. approach has been to try and grow content with the scale of the community. If you start with building worlds, um, then what you end up with is when you start to onboard users, they go into them and there's like nothing going on. You know, yeah, there's exactly. no one there. It's dull. No one's building any content because it's hard to do. And so um, they drop off, you know, and the next person comes along and there's no one there and the next person comes along and before long, it's kind of like a, you know, dead meme. Um, but if you start with um, stories, deep you know mm. rich engaging stories build out characters to bring those spaces to life um, yeah. and you can interact with them you think about going into 
a game for the first time, you know, even if it's an online multiplayer game, your first experience is starting to interact with other content in the game. And then you might find some friends. And so we can turn um, intelligence in the metaverse into this base layer of, it, of, of experience or life. Um, and do that in a web three build those things and own those things and trade those things. Then we sort mm. of overcome this little chicken and egg problem with scaling users and spaces. Yeah, no, let's expand on that, man. So we, we went to ASM alter state machine. I know that's sort of like your AI X NFT merge. Yep. Uh, let's, let's expand yep. on that. What do you mean by also having like a companion or, or a side, you know, along with your identity? Yeah. I mean, so Altered State Machine's kind of core is about enabling ownership of artificial intelligence by individuals or communities. Um, and, um, and within that, there are a whole bunch of different um, use cases and they range from enabling content creation. You know, we've got um, AIs that we use internally now and will turn into products that can build characters, um, objects, animate those characters, music, um, spaces. And so you can type to create the worlds you want to see and be Ooh. part of. Very true for the last five to 10 years of AI. Mm. Um, but now, literally, if you can type on a machine, you can interact with this technology and you can harness its power. And so even if you're not techie or up to date, products will start to infuse these capabilities and then mm. everything you use will be powered by these things. And yep, that makes sense. Um, you may not even notice that that's happening, but you'll be using the tools as a consumer. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure Google search uses, uses AI when we search and it sort of, of course it does. what we're doing. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's an example of it being there, but we're not sort of knowing, yeah. right? Yeah. Cool, man. Um, FIFA. That's something yeah. that made me actually initially reach out and learn about you guys. FIFA's come your way and you guys are doing something with it. I would love to yeah. know how that happened and, and what the what the goal is there. Yeah, so we um when in the Futureverse we kind of divided the world into five slices in terms of the channels to bring users into um kind of interact with our technology and our platforms. Um and so those slices were mass market media, um, culture and celebrity, um, consumer goods, music and sports. And in each one of those categories, we've gone out and got what we think are the world's best brands um, to help us take, you know, the technology we've built and the kind of cool Web3 native content that we've created and expose that to a broad audience around the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so in sports, FIFA was our first kind of major global sports brand. Um, and we were the first Web3 company to sign a deal with them to mm. bring a game to market. Um, I think probably, possibly the first company outside of EA Games right. um, for a long time to, to build a game. Um, and when we took the concept of the um, FIFA AI League to them, it was something that they hadn't seen before. It was kind of a new idea. People get a little bit kind of over it. Meanwhile, the real things kind of... Yep build in that period yeah. and the next cycle comes around and they're the ones well positioned to take over and you're right my my experience is that brands you know we're talking with them uh, you know every week signing contracts every yeah. other month with major global brands and yeah. they're not you know they understand this is the future of the internet um they may not be the same like hype in the volume in nft marketplaces yeah. and stuff like that but they realize that this will power their next customer experience and it'll come in a much more subtle way than it has. Yeah, I think um, the brands government, and when, you when you really think about it, it's like you said, the ongoing digitization of the world. Yeah. So whether that means we interact you know, in, in a virtual environment or whether that means we put on AR glasses and suddenly everyone has this flick that you're in, you've got this digital layer on top, there's gonna be this ongoing experience. It'll, it'll never stop right more digital because yeah. digital is more efficient and effective than the real world yeah. which is also part of the metaverse right but yeah that interest and that belief is the core belief is what i found um yeah and yeah. and it's kind of um you know the those organizations are becoming a little bit more sophisticated that they're, they're all going to be like these things that like you it's consumed your whole attention 
And today we don't even think twice about it. You know, mm. my internet, my mobile internet cloud application is just like the de facto way to build something. Back yeah. then it was like, um, you know, transformative. And now it's just mundane. And that's what will happen with the metaverse. It'll go through from that cycle of everything's mm. the metaverse to actually everything's the metaverse and you don't know it. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, cool chat, man. Uh, Aaron, it's been a pleasure. I think um, uh, I, I had a couple of questions. I'm going to rewind it back a little bit. So some ending questions were, um, now there's, I, I know the Web3 space is quite unique in the sense of everyone's also a user, an investor, but also builders and creators in a way. So there's a, an mm -hmm. interesting mix of personalities here. I think at, at some point you, you'll go on to try to do all of them. You've had a couple yeah. of decades experience in tech building businesses, et cetera. You've obviously pushed through some barriers and all sorts of things. What does it take to keep going? <laughs> I mean, I think like anything in life, you have to have um, a passion and um, a belief in something deeper that drives you because cycles come and go, mm. hype comes and go. People get like frustrated with your progress or... Um, you know, the, the typical, you know, when, you know, question pops up and um, we've had this like really deep belief in putting humans at the center of the internet again All and, join, and join the future verse and be on this trip with us, you know, without yeah. having to, you know, take ETH out of your pocket and, yeah. and um, invest, innovative. invest again. Yeah. Super innovative. I love it.